In today's video, we pull the engine out and paint the engine bay on the EP3 with this color shift paint. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. God bless you and welcome to more Motorsports Garage. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. In today's video, I'm gonna be pulling this engine out. We're gonna be painting the bay with some Duplicolor. I have this color shift paint. Now this is a blue to purple color. I still have the green to bluish purple color and I have another one. I tested all three of them and this is the one I like the most. So we're gonna be doing this on the bay. So basically I'm gonna be pulling this engine out over on Texas Honda channel. Uh, I'll put a little time lapse here, but the majority of it will be done over on the other channel. And then we will get to prepping this bay for paint. You do not have to pull the engine to paint the bay. It just comes out with even better results. I have videos on this channel of me painting the engine bay without pulling the engine and it looks really good still. So the choice is up to you how much work you wanna put into the car, um, but while the engine's out, we're gonna be going through some other things, maybe new clutch and some other stuff like that. So it won't be just to paint the bay. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, so here it is with the engine pulled out. Next thing we have to do is get it all prepped. As you can see, it is really nasty in here. The subframe's disgusting. We got overspray all along it, so all that'll be getting cleaned up. The CV axles used to sling grease, but not anymore since they've been replaced with uh, new ones. So I gotta get a lot of deep detailing in there. Now the back firewall has a, um, a heat shield basically on it, so I'm not too worried about getting all that back there. I will get the silver areas painted black but the back firewall back there will not be painted. I'm not removing all of that to paint behind it. You're not gonna see it, um, but I will be getting up through here in all the silver areas. And then of course the piece that goes across. Um, so I'm gonna get it all cleaned up and get the overspray off of the radiator because there's overspray from white, purple, and now this uh, deep mint color. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that off too before it goes back in because we want the radiator to work really well. Not that it's having issues now because it's not but just wanna make sure it's all good. I will be pulling this away, but not fully removing it. I'll remove as much brackets and stuff out of here as possible, but I will not be doing a full 100% strip down of the bay. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that stuff as far into the engine bay as I can and get it all sanded, scuffed, wiped down, and cleaned. So I need to get the wheels back on it so I can get it pushed out. We can pressure wash this engine bay and get it all cleaned up. All right, so I'm just using some oven cleaner gonna spray everywhere that I'll be scrubbing. I'm gonna let this sit while I get the pressure washer set up. Make sure to get it everywhere. I don't know how this works on paint so beware of getting it on paint. I just know it's really strong. Here it is, and as you can see, it is so much cleaner all the way through underneath the ABS and all of that, so it looks really good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this fully dry, however long that takes. Uh, I will go through and scrub with a scuff pad and some Dawn dish soap just to kind of degrease even more. 
while it's scuffing it'll also be scuffing the paint up and then we'll get things taped off and draped and all that and as you can see all this is much cleaner now I do need to go through wipe it down just a little bit and it should look pretty nice so I'm gonna go ahead and let all this dry all right so I've got it prepped I went ahead and used some 320 grit and some soapy water and wiped it down scuffed it up really well uh, making sure to get into all the spots that I could you don't want any of this flaking off it will not have a problem with engine heat if you guys are going straight to the comments to ask that I'm gonna try to address that now a lot of people ask will this paint handle high heat I have never had an issue with any paint handling high heat so uh, this paint definitely doesn't though I've used it before but as you can see I went ahead used aluminum foil uh, and went ahead and wrapped the lines so that way I can just scoot this out of the way paint and then just take this off when I'm done. I've never done this method and I don't know why because it is super awesome. It just clings to itself and uh, it's really nice. So I went ahead and got this stuff covered up because again, there's a mat on the firewall. I'm not gonna be painting that, but I have these spots exposed that you will see. Um, same with down here, just a little bit of silver there. You won't see much more, but I'll try to hit it all. And got all of this in here prepped real nice. I'm actually gonna pull this away when I'm painting so I can get under there. It does not touch it, so it'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off or take that off, one of the two. Um, but I've wiped everything else down with acetone and it is pretty much ready to go. I got it plasticed up. I got this painter's uh, drop cloth type thing from Walmart and you know I've been using it for quite a while. It works really well at covering everything up. Um, we've got a fan with a filter and we're basically ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that real quick and then get to painting. We're going to do a flat black base. Uh, it's like a flat primer. It works really well uh, with a flat base coat, so keep that in mind. And then we're going to do the gloss uh, 1K clear over the top once it's all dry. So I hope you guys enjoy. So one can of this Rust-Oleum high performance enamel was enough to do every spot in this engine bay and go over it pretty good. So it looks pretty good. We'll let this dry. Then we get to do the duplicolor color shift. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. All right, after it's dry, it looks pretty smooth all the way through. 
We'll go ahead and do the duplicolor color shift. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start over here. Another thing, when painting, always do a test fire to make sure it's spraying right before spraying on the panel, because I've had issues where they don't spray right and it's actually just a bad can, so always do that. So here it is, looks super nice in person, all the way through, all the areas are covered. So for all the spots that you're going to see, they are definitely covered and looks absolutely awesome. You can see I got everywhere back here as well. I know a lot of people think I miss a ton of areas, but I pay pretty close attention to every area so that way I don't miss anything because I love paying attention to all the small details probably because of my autism but you know what I call that a superpower yeah I know I'm weird but it's fine so I'm gonna go ahead let this dry then we're gonna apply the 1k clear over the top we're gonna wait about 10 to 20 minutes to let it kind of dry up some um, depending on the temperature could dry faster could dry slower the warmer the temperature the faster it dries but uh yeah so far looking really good we're just gonna go ahead and let it dry hope you guys are enjoying the video all right, I almost forgot about the centerpiece, but I went and painted that off camera and it's been drying, so it should be good enough now for the 1K clear. The reason I'm not going with 2K is just because I don't have any. I already have this and it's almost a full can, so it should be more than enough for this. Um, it works pretty good. It's not as good as 2K, but it works pretty good. It's better than most normal clear coats. Um, if you're going over white though, it kind of yellows it a little bit, but it won't do anything to this but make it glossy and give it a protective coating. So I'm going to go ahead and start down here first. So. <laughs>
All right, so there it is with two coats of the 1K Gloss Clear. Looks absolutely beautiful all the way through. And we're gonna keep it looking this good. So once it's dry, I'm gonna pull that off of there. We're gonna get that back in, but before it goes back in, I'm just gonna throw a clutch in, um, get a new clutch in. That's kind of one of the reasons I pulled it out as well, because I need to do some stuff while it's out. It's just a little bit easier while it's out. Plus, the results really paid off. Super, super nice. Um, we'll put some towels down on the sides and stuff whenever we go to put it back in. This piece will be removed because it makes putting that in easier. Just be very careful when putting it back in and it'll look really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry more and then we'll get this thing put back together. Okay, here it is. Looks absolutely amazing. Praise God it didn't get all scratched up during the install process. It's really hard to pick up how good it really looks on camera. In person it looks so much better. And if the sun was out, I would just show you guys what it looks like outside in the sun. But unfortunately it hasn't been sunny in days. Uh, which really sucks, but I will try to get another video out on that. Also, I wanted to give you a one month update. It has been a month since I painted the car and it is not all flaking off. It actually looks really, really good still. So for all the ones that said it would flake off, you were incorrect. And yes, you should put a clear coat on this and I plan to, if God is willing, I'm going to get this whole thing wet sanded and apply a 2K clear over it and do video of all that for you guys. Um, now, I did do it on my wife's pink CRV. If you didn't see that video, it will be linked in the description. I basically painted it berry pink from Rust Oleum and then applied Spray Max 2K Clear all out of spray can over the whole thing, then wet sanded it, buffed it out, and it looked like a spray gun paint job. It is super legit. It will be linked in the description. Um, so you can make spray can look good and last a long time. You just have to prep it properly and obviously clear coat's gonna help with longevity. Um, but yeah, this has turned out really good and it is looking so nice under the hood. I cannot stress how nice it looks under here. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up for you guys so you guys can hear. Uh, it runs pretty good. <laughs> Got the Bull Boost steering wheel with a discount code MORE10. The link will be in the description if you guys want to get one. And we've got the SI seats in here from the 2008 Civic SI. This is a 2002 Civic SI. So uh, the seats are a little bit nicer from the new ones, at least in my opinion. But yeah, it's definitely making some progress and we do have more work to do to it. So you definitely want to stay tuned if you are new here. Please click the subscribe button. It's totally free to do and it helps support the channel so I can get better content out for you guys and eventually get enough money saved up to where I can get a shop again and start working on people's cars again. Um, right now I can't do anything for anybody. I know I've had a lot of people messaging me and commenting. I cannot work for other people. Uh, mainstream, I have like a couple friends here and there that I'll do work for just to get you guys content, but I cannot do like a bunch of customer cars and I definitely can't do it here. The city said absolutely no running the business out of the garage in a residential area, which is totally understandable, but I can do my own things. That's for sure. And uh, until then we are just going to do what we can. But that is basically it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, drop a comment below, and share the videos around. But uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get off here, but before I do, as usual, I just wanted to let you know this. Here I wanted to mention there will be a free Gideon Bible download in the description for Apple or Android. Uh, everyone should know the Word of God, what Jesus came to do. He came to save the sinner and set the captive free. He died for you and me, went up to that cross, died and defeated death three days later, rose from the grave, and now has the keys to death. Anyone who believes in his finished work at the cross will be saved. If you have addiction or bondage or anything that is holding you down or you don't feel loved, God says he loves you, so much so that he gave his only begotten son. And we are saved by grace through faith, lest any man should boast. So it's not of our works. It's of our faith in Jesus and what he did. So I just wanted to let you guys know the good news, that everyone has a chance. So repent, turn from your sin, and trust in the Lord. But that is basically it for this video. And until next time, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.